this is boiler water testing. Have a seat. This is gonna take a while. Boiler water testing. A routine job usually done by junior engineers and cadets. It's a small job with a big impact. First, let's examine what boiler feed water is while I go take the samples. Boiler feed water is distilled water that has been chemically treated which will flow through a closed system as shown here. Constantly evaporating into superheated steam in the boiler being used for various purposes such as moving a turbine, then condensing to a hot well or cascade tank before returning to the boiler. But do you know why it's important to know? Well, boiler water has certain parameters that ensure protection from corrosion and prevention of scale and deposit formation. Hey, let's get back to the control room and go in a bit more detail about the testing to find these parameters. Before getting started, there's something important you need to know. Most of the testing equipment and chemicals shown in this video come from the king of marine chemicals, Uniter. I say this not only in appreciation to the good people and scientists over at Unidor, but because they're the marine chemical supplier of our vessel. This is important because maybe on your vessel you have a different chemical supplier with different testing equipment and different chemical names. But in any case, in this video you'll at least see Uniter's way of testing boiler water, what the results of these parameters mean, and which Uniter chemicals we use to keep the boiler parameters in operational range. So with that being said, let's begin. Here's what's included in the Uniter Boiler Water Test Kit. We'll go everything step by step and I'll show you which tools are used, why this parameter is important, and the chemical used to maintain this parameter. So let's get started with the most simple test, pH. pH is an indicator of how alkaline or acid the boiler water is. This should be maintained between 9.5 to 11.5 pH inside the boiler, creating an alkaline environment, however, without going over the limit. This is to avoid acidic corrosion from the water being low in pH or by scale formation, which is faster in very alkaline waters. Also, as you'll see later, that some chemicals depend on an alkaline environment to function properly. So the pH test is done by simply rinsing and filling the plastic beaker to 50 milliliters of sample water, then adding 600 milligrams of pH reagent, mixing it and placing the pH indicator strip, leaving it for one minute inside. Finally, you compare it to the color shown on the box. As you can see, the pH here is 11.5. pH is controlled in two points using these Unitor chemicals. Condensate control for feed water in the hot well to ensure it's at least 9 pH before the boiler and alkalinity control for inside the boiler to provide 9.5 to 11.5 pH, which is required for corrosion control. To visualize it better, check out the diagram at the side. All right, so next we'll check the phosphate levels in our boiler water, which should be maintained within 20 to 50 parts per million. Phosphate is important to maintain because it will react with any calcium impurities in the water and form what is called a precipitate that will accumulate at the bottom of the boiler which can later be blown down or discharged in other words as seen here. To test phosphate we use this comparator. 
First, we will rinse and then fill these two sample cells with 10 milliliters of sample water. One will be the control cell and be on the left side of the comparator. The other, we will crush a phosphate indicator tablet, shake and ensure it's dissolved, then wait 10 minutes. After the 10 minutes are over, with the indicator disc as you can see here, we can check where the colors match and obtain the phosphate concentration. To control phosphate concentration, we will use the Unitor chemical hardness control, which I showed in a previous video. This is a phosphate compound that will do what I previously mentioned, react with calcium impurities to form a precipitate. Continuing with the comparator test, we will now test hydrazine levels of the boiler which in our boiler should be at a concentration of 0.1 to 0.2 parts per million. Hydrazine is very important because it reacts with the dissolved oxygen inside the boiler water to form nitrogen and water. I'll explain why this is important in a bit, but first let's see how we test it. Hydrazine is tested by once again rinsing and filling the cells with 10 milliliters of sample water. Afterwards, adding one gram of hydrazine reagent to the right cell, allowing it to dissolve and leave two minutes before comparing the colors again with the indicator disc. To control hydrazine levels, we use the Unitor Chemicals Oxygen Scavenger or Control. They remove the dissolved oxygen, like I previously mentioned, to prevent oxidizing of the metals, as well as forming a coat of magnetite, a black iron oxide film that protects the metal from further corrosion in alkaline environments. The next test we'll look at is the chlorine test with this beaker and testing pills. Testing for chlorines is very important due to it being an indication of seawater contaminating the boiler water. This causes increased conductivity between the boiler metal and its water, accelerating oxidation. Since we know an estimate of our chloride concentration and it's low, we will rinse and fill a 100 milliliter sample and start dissolving indicator pills inside until we see a color change from yellow to brown. Depending on the amount of pills we used, we can then calculate the chloride concentration inside the water. Well, there isn't exactly a chemical treatment to reduce chloride concentration because if the concentration is too high, what you should do is blow down and the new boiler water that fills in and replaces it should be at a lower chloride concentration. This is heavily dependent on feed water, which if you've seen my previous videos, comes from distilled water produced in the freshwater generator. One should also ensure low chloride concentration in the condensate inside the hot well. Finally, it's time to test P and M alkalinity using this 200 milliliter flask and indicator pills. P and M alkalinity, basically together, calculate the total amount of inorganic carbons inside the sample, which in turn will reflect on the total alkalinity in the sample. Remember that boiler water should be an alkaline environment, but not in excess, to promote the formation of precipitates and the magnetite film, as I previously mentioned. We test P alkalinity by rinsing and then filling the 200 milliliter flask with sample water. 
and placing indicator pills until we observe a color change from blue to yellow. Afterwards, for M alkalinity, we place M alkalinity pills until we observe another color change from yellow to purple and calculate the following formulas. It's important to calculate this because it's equivalent to the carbon acid levels in our boiler, which should be controlled using the unitor chemical alkalinity control, which like I previously mentioned, is key to create the alkaline environment for chemicals like hardness control that create precipitates to work correctly. And that's the basics of boiler water testing and treatment. I hope to have at least successfully shown a small part of what's going on in the boiler. And if you wanted to see, this is how our data sheet looks like in the end. Everything's in order. But anyway, what I really want you to know is exactly what we're trying to avoid by doing all this. You see, if deposits or corrosion occur inside the pipe, then it creates an inadequate heat transfer between the combustion gases inside the furnace and the water inside the pipe. If the metal becomes weak due to corrosion, or if the metal becomes overheated because of slow heat transfer due to deposits, then what will occur is that there will be a lower efficiency in the boiler because it takes more time to evaporate water. And in the worst case, if there's big damage, a pipe could even burst. And trust me, if this happens, it'll make a very, very bad day. But to change the topic, I'm actually pretty happy that today I could feel like an awesome chemist, even if it was just for a moment. To tell you the truth, it's quite the opposite. I actually failed chemistry lab twice at my academy. But it goes to show you, if you're curious about something, you'll study and you'll slowly learn. And speaking of curiosity, if you want to learn more chemical details, such as proper concentration for chemical dosing, then the amazing people at Unidor made a manual full of information that will help you decide the chemical concentrations for your specific boiler type. And as always, before working on chemicals, make sure you always use the proper PPE, as well as reviewing the first aid and hazards located on the material data safety sheet of that chemical. Here, you can find manufacturer instructions and precautions. This is because when working on vessel, personal safety and safety awareness is key. If you've watched to this point, I assume you're either a cadet or someone related to or interested in maritime engineering. And therefore, I invite you to see the related videos such as boiler chemical dosing and the freshwater generator, which is where boiler feed water comes from. And personally, I'd be very happy if you subscribed or if you send me a message on Instagram. I'd be happy to meet anyone who shares the love of knowledge. In any case, till next time, success and nothing else, seafarer.